Welcome, my friends. Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Today, I am camped just outside of Laramie, Wyoming, at a beautiful lake. There's not many trees around here, but we've got uh, seagulls flying around. There's uh, all sorts of interesting uh, birds and a lot of fishermen out here. I think this is a good place to uh, do a little bit of construction. So today I'm going to try to work again on the Murphy bed. So this will be part two. Uh, I did an earlier video where I built the part one, the base portion of the Murphy bed system, which was the sofa bed uh, on the bottom. And today I'm going to try to build the mattress on the top, the part that actually swings up against the wall. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started, get set up out here. When I was working on the Murphy bed last time, I ran into a roadblock. And it's not that the Murphy bed itself is so difficult to construct. I've watched enough videos and seen enough plans to know how it goes together. And there's certainly kits to build Murphy beds. That's not the problem at all. The problem is making it fit. And let me explain why it's such a difficult thing to make it fit. Picture, if you will, this book as a mattress that's going up against the wall. Uh, pretty easy. It uh, sits against the wall and then it's hinged at the bottom so that it can rotate down. Sounds pretty simple. Um, now I'm going to do mine instead of this direction here. It's going to be rotated sideways. And part of that is given the height of the wall that I'm dealing with as well as the way the whole thing is set up. So it's going to be uh, this way and it's going to be rotating down. The problem is when the bed folds down if it's uh, not hinged right, this outer edge that's coming down is hitting the countertops on the kitchen side. So I have the choice of making narrower countertops instead of 24 inches wide. I would have to make them something like 18 inches wide. That makes for a pretty narrow countertop. The other solution is where you hinge it on this side. If you hinge it on the inside bottom corner, then uh, the width of the bed from here to here, it's sitting flush against the wall and it only projects out the 55 inches plus the uh, piece of uh, three quarter inch ply on the back side. So you get 55 and three quarters out to this point and it barely clears a 24 inch countertop in my space. But the problem here with this is the thickness of the mattress. Say you've got an eight inch thick mattress. Now this eight inch thick mattress is hinged from this point and it descends downward by eight inches. Now it's this downward distance here that's the problem because the distance between it and my existing sofa bed that I have already constructed is not great enough. It's about six inches. So I have about two inches of difference and I can't extend the ceiling height and uh, I would have to go to a thinner mattress. Now a thinner mattress uh, for the bottom for the sofa bed is one solution. In fact, that's exactly how Gabriel solved this uh, problem in his step van. I'll link his video above where he has a Murphy bed and his uh, construction was with a thinner mattress here. Another solution is to use a different kind of hinge. Instead of using a gate hinge or a normal hinge like you would see, you use one of these things here. This is actually used for boat seats to pivot the seats. So the seat sits on the top and this plate and pivots around. However, in a lot of the DIY, the do-it-yourself Murphy beds, they use these on the sides so that uh, it attaches to a bracket on the side or a support system. And then the mattress itself is on this plate and it rotates down. Now the advantage in what I just talked about in the earlier system is that this is about uh, four and a half, five inches here. And so you're going four or five inches out further towards the countertops and you're only dropping down by four or five inches. So you're sort of splitting it half and half. So you gain a little bit. So I bought these thinking this would be the solution, but the problem is it's still hitting the countertops and it does clear the bed. So it's not quite the perfect solution. And these corners, when they rotate, are having difficult time clearing uh, the walls. So they sort of clip the walls. So it doesn't look like this is gonna work as a solution. I'm gonna have to table these and maybe I'll be able to use these somewhere else in my construction, uh, maybe with some pivoting seats. 
um, maybe with some other things or maybe I'll pass these along uh, to someone else who's doing a build who can use these. Anyway, getting back to my analogy here and my example of using a book as the mattress, what I've decided to do is to add uh, some support. So the bed is here and I'm going to put a 2x4 and try to put it down along the bottom 2x4 with a half inch sheet of plywood over that to give myself 2 inches out. So I need the hinge to be 2 inches out so that the bed when it goes down is extending 2 inches closer to the countertop uh, so that I have about a half inch clearance from the countertop, a 24 inch countertop and the bed instead of descending down a full 8 inches uh, is going to descend down by six inches, actually six and three quarters because I've got a piece of three quarter inch plywood there. So it will barely clear. In fact, it's going to be sitting exactly on top of my daybed sofa that exists here already. So that's the math that I've come up with. The challenge in the engineering there was to figure out how to make things fit and I think they'll fit, but I really don't know until I construct it and put it together. My fear and concern is the thickness of the hinge and the way the pin rotates in that location. The math might be slightly off by a quarter of an inch, a half inch, something like that because of compensating for where the hinge pivots. So I've got to try to work on that and compensate for that and think about that as I'm putting this together. Um, so that's where I'm at today. I'm going to go ahead and try to construct the box and uh, get the hinge set up and do some tests to make sure that the whole thing works. Um, I'm on my own here, so I don't have any help out here by this lake. So I'm going to be doing this today solo. I may have a little bit of a problem. I opened up my doors, unloaded everything, started uh, setting up with the uh, sawhorses out there. And I had the doors open to my step van and I uh, came back in, uh, shut the doors for lunch. And I noticed about three or 400 or 500 or 700 mosquitoes that have come inside the step van. And so now I'm not sure how to get them out. I've been in here with a fly swatter for about the last 30 minutes and uh, there's just too many mosquitoes and can't open up the doors to blow them out because then more will come in. Uh, I think I might have to just load everything up and drive into the city and find an area with the breeze and uh, open up the doors and try to blow them out. Um, but I've already got probably 20 mosquito bites now. Uh, it's just crazy all the mosquitoes here. Uh, let me show you they're really small little mosquitoes. You can see the mosquitoes over here. I'm sort of uh, moving my hands so you can see they're all moving around. There's bunches of them over here too. There's probably 20 mosquitoes right there. I can't say that today was a success. I worked a little bit on the Murphy bed on the top part but uh, on days like this I think it's better just to uh, stop and regroup and come back at it when I'm a little bit brighter and doing a little bit better. I made two cuts that were wrong just right in the beginning. Cut into the prime piece of wood that I was supposed to use at the bottom and tried to patch that. I cut one of the other pieces the wrong way and uh, anyway so I think given that and you can see there's thunder clouds that are rolling in here in the background on this side and on the other side over here thunder and lightning that's happening. I think it's time to call it a day and try for this at another day. That said, I'm in a beautiful location, wonderful lake here. I guess there's pelicans out here. I didn't think there was pelicans in Wyoming. That's really uh, odd to me and the breeze is picking up. You can hear the thunder there. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode. <music>